Hey guys, this is Korak from Edureka. Welcome to today's session on AWS Route 53. Right, so before we get to the topic at hand, let's just discuss today's agenda. First up, we talk about what is Route 53. Then we talk about why do we need Route 53 in the industry today. And then we talk about how Route 53 works. Then we talk about the features of Route 53. Then we talk about the types of routing policies that are there. We have a demo on AWS Route 53. Then we have the benefits of Route 53. And finally, we end it with a case study on Newsweek, which uses Route 53 in their cloud systems. So the first thing we talk about is what is AWS Route 53? So as we all know, AWS is the web services provided by Amazon. So Route 53 is one such service, which is basically a highly available, scalable DNS web service, right? So it gives businesses and developers a very cost-effective way to route end users to the internet applications. This is by translating the domain name that a website has to a very scalable IP address, right? So this is what Route 53 does. So in simpler terms, suppose you type out the address of the web page that you need, right? What Route 53 does is Route 53 asks you to register the domain of the website. And once you do that, Basically, Route 53 translates the domain name into an elastic IP address, which can be accessed by the public, right? So why do we need Route 53 in the industry? The first thing that we see is that Route 53 is needed because of its simple routing policy. Now, this means that a single resource performs a given function for your domain, and that is why it's called simple. So you don't need many resources. Also, it is highly available and scalable as a DNS web service and the fact that it has geolocation routing. Now, geolocation routing is basically used when you want to route traffic based on the location of your users, right? And there is latency-based routing. Latency-based routing is basically when you have resources in multiple AWS regions and you want to route traffic to the regions that provide the best latency, right? So this is why you need Route 53. Next, we come to how Route 53 works. So if you're an end user, suppose you type in a certain website like youtube.com or facebook.com. What it does is this domain name is sent to the DNS server that is there and the DNS server asks Route 53 for the IP address. Now Route 53 sends the DNS server an IP address which is accessible to the public and then the DNS server sends that IP address back to the end user who can basically now use that IP address to access whichever website that he wanted, the domain that he wanted, right? So this is how Route 53 works. Now in simpler terms, what we can see is that there's a web client and there are various services such as Elastic Load Balancer, EC2 and Route 53 as well. So the client basically goes to the API gateway and asks for certain services that are there. There can be S3 services, there can be Elastic Load Balancers, EC2. What Route 53 does is that it registers the domain and acts as the DNS web server so that it can route traffic in and out of these services because these services are integrated with Route 53. Now, how does this happen? Route 53 has services that are integrated with it for example, EC2, S3, Elastic Load Balancer. Now these all work in tandem with Route 53. So let's talk about some of the key features for Route 53. The first feature that we talk about is Route 53 Resolver. Now the Route 53 Resolver is basically used to create conditioning forwarding rules and DNS endpoints to resolve custom names mastered in Amazon Route 53, private hosted zones, right? So there are public hosted zones and there are private hosted zones. So Route 53 Resolver is used mostly when there is a private hosted zone which needs a certain DNS endpoint. Next, we talk about the application recovery controller. Now that is basically something that ensures the availability zones or regions are continuously audited for recovery readiness, right? Next, we see the third feature of Route 53 as traffic flow. So traffic flow is basically easy to use in cost-effective global traffic management systems, right? And this is basically 
to route end users to the best endpoints of the application based in the system, right? This is done basically to route end users to the best endpoint for your application based on geo proximity, latency, health, and etc. So next thing we talk about is the geo DNS. Now this basically routes end users to a particular endpoint that you specify based on the end users geographical location. So according to your location, if you specify the endpoint, then that is when you can use geo DNS. And then we see that there are regular health checks and monitoring. So Amazon Route 53 can monitor the health and performance of your application very well and as well as your servers and your resources. And finally, we see that there is domain registration. Now, Amazon Route 53 offers domain name registration services where you can search for and register available domain names. Now, some domain names may cost you money, some may not, right? So these are the features of Route 53. Next up, we come to the types of routing policies. So the first routing policy is the simple routing policy, which is used for a single resource that performs a given function for your domain, like the web server that serves content for your website, right? So that is simple routing policy where you are using a single resource that performs a given function, right? Next up, we have a failover routing policy. Now this policy comes into use when you want to configure the active passive failover. Failover occurs when your system automatically transfers control to another system, right? Next up, we have geolocation routing policy. Now, geolocation routing policy is generally used when you want to route traffic based on the location of your users. This is something that we discussed before. Now, it can be from a particular location or from a global location, right? Next up, we have geo proximity routing policy. Now, this is basically used when you want to route traffic based on the location of resources and you can optionally shift traffic from resource to another resource or from one resource in one location to resources in another location, right? Now, finally, we come to latency routing policy. Now, you can use this policy when you have resources in multiple AWS regions and you want to route traffic to the regions that provide the best latency and less route trip time, right? So, if the region provides best latency you go and route your traffic for your website over there right next up we see demo for aws route 53 so the first thing that you do is you go to the aws management console and you type in route 53 so once you go to route 53 you can see a lot of options there now route 53 has many features so as you can see here there's the dns management feature the traffic management feature Availability monitoring, domain registration, readiness check, routing control, anything. So let's just check some of the features. So first we go to domain registration and we click on register domain. So as soon as we do that, we can see that you can choose a domain name and there's a certain cost if it's a .com or a .net or something. So if let's say AWS route 53 tutorial.com and we go check that takes a bit of time you can see this is available and it is around $12 a year now the thing is your domain can be paid where you can have domains such as .com .org .net .a anything like that but if you want a free domain you need to basically integrate that with AWS and free domains are not available on AWS so you need to have another one so let's see how to do that so what you do is you go to free norm which is basically a free domain registering website and you can get your free domain here in this website. So what you can do is you can just type in whichever domain that you need and you can check if it's available or not. And you can see that all of these are available and free. So these are not free, but these are free .ml, .ga, .cf. Now the problem with these are even though these are free these are not secured with policies so there will be some problem with traffic management when it comes to that right so you register your domain with freenom so i've already registered with freenom and i have a domain so let's see that 
right? So as you can see, these are my sub services and you go to my domains and you can see that there is a domain right here, which is active, which is awsr53tutorial.tk, right? So this is how my domain has been registered as a free domain. Now what you need to do is basically register this with AWS, right? So let's see how to do that. So to basically register your domain with AWS, what you can do is you can create a record where basically you'll have to type in the record name, the type of record that you want and the value for it. So first you need to basically have one which is the IP address. Then you'll have a routing policy that you can choose between weighted, geolocation, latency, failover, multi-value, any of those. And you can basically check out the name servers, check out anything that you need. So first of this is routing policy. Then we have the name servers that are there. Now what you can do here is that you can create them. And once you have created them, like I have here, you get something like this. So in here, the Route 53 IPv4 address is this, which is publicly accessible, which is this. And this is the name servers that is there. So these name servers, what they do is you have to copy these name servers. And what you have to do is you'll have to go back to your domain, go to manage domain. And basically what you have to do is manage Freenom DNS right and you'll have to edit the name servers so right now what you have to do is it'll be set to use default name server you have to change it to the custom name servers and add all of these name servers that you see here right here you'll have to add all of these name servers to this and change them and keep it like that so once you do that your your domain at freenom is now integrated with aws right so the next thing we see is another one of route 53's features that is hosted zones and how to integrate that with ec2 so ec2 s3 these are all other services that are integrated with amazon route 53 and we can see what that is like so when you come to ec2 what you can do is you can create an instance for ec2 and what you can do is you can go to launch instances and you can choose from a various selection here which is the linux one or the windows one that you have or microsoft and all of these web servers that are there so if you have a free tier account you can use the free tier microsoft or the ubuntu one and once you do that you can choose t12 micro which is the type of instance that you would want to be running and since i've already selected that now as you can see here it has a public elastic ip address now elastic ip is something that is already present in your aws and that is something that is another service which you can use for route 53 so you'll have to create an elastic ip address that will be accessible to the public so that they can view your web hosted web page so this is a private ipv4 address which can be accessed only by you and this is the public access which is accessed by anybody who can right and after all of this what you have to do is you after you create the instance you'll have to download something called putty which is utty and all you have to do is take the public ip copy it and once you install putty you there'll be a key that will be generated so download that key and put that host name here with the ip address go to ssh go to auth and once you download that key here you will have something like this now once you've downloaded putty what you can do is type in whichever login password that you have so once you've logged in into putty what you can do is you can basically have this code that you've written here about the web page that you want to host and basically use some commands such as vi index dot html or whatever VI is basically the command you use and then you'll have to use the HTML file that you have and you can basically then copy the entire file here and paste it into Putty. So in, to basically insert you need to have shift I and yeah. 
So this is basically you copying the HTML file into your Ubuntu server. Now Putty is basically a free implementation of SSH for Windows, right? So you will have the copied web page here and you can just escape that. So what we basically want is to host that static web page, right? So our aim is to basically have this domain name and to get a certain IP address for it. Now since we have that IP, we can just see this and this is what we basically want. So what you can do here is you can access it and you can check out what it is like. So DAC signing. So you can access this. You can select this. Once you select this, you will basically see the details that are there. So this is the IP address that's there. This is the record name on the domain name. So if you check this, then the name servers first is the IP address. These are the name servers that are there with the domain. So, and finally, we see the kind of routing policy that we have, which is simple routing policy. So this is how you can track your domain and create your domain and host it. So when you have a domain like AWS Route 53 tutorial, if you have the certain IP address, so if I go back here and so if I basically copy this IP and I just paste it here, what it should do is it should redirect me to this place. So this is for the IP, but what AWS Route 53 does is give me the same web page for the IP with the domain name for it, right? So this is basically how Route 53 works. So what we learned from the demo is that how does Route 53 work? You can first log into the management console, then you can register your domain on Route 53. Now we talked about registering our domain where we can either register for .com, .net, .org, .in or register your free domain and then integrate it with AWS Route 53. Then we can basically host a static web page on an EC2 instance that you have like a T12 micro for Ubuntu and then use Putty to access the instance that you created on EC2. And then you basically create an elastic IP address for the public to access your domain and finally you map your web page using Route 53, right? So this is in short how Route 53 works as we saw. Now next up we talk about the benefits of Route 53. Now Route 53 has many benefits. One of the main benefits of Route 53 is the fact that it is highly available and reliable, right? So apart from the fact that it is scalable, what we see is that it is reliable as well and secure. So it is flexible in nature. So you can basically tamper with a lot of features of Route 53 and it is very flexible and it is cost effective so it saves you a lot of money you can basically register a free domain with aws route 53 and that will save you a lot of money as well per year and finally we see that route 53 is scalable and secure now this is definitely true because it is one of the most secure and scalable dns services available in the world now after that final thing we see is the newsweek case study now newsweek is basically a company which is based in New York and provides print and online news coverage, right? So they monitor and host their cloud presence using AWS services such as R53 and EC2. And it has basically become an integral part of their cloud presence. And this is why you can see that AWS services are used everywhere all around the world. And R53 is extremely important when it comes to routing data and end users to certain applications. So with that, I end today's session. Thank you and have a nice day.